Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with me. My name is Cotton Candy Doll. If you're new here, then welcome. Welcome all. This is a shifting video. And it's completely silent. You're not going to hear anything. So, update. Everything's running along a little bit smoother. I'm a little more tired this week, but that's all great. All right, I'm going to talk about my time back at My Hero. I'm going to tell you guys what I did when I went back there. <laughs> I'm probably in big trouble. This is just one of those cringy videos, so um, yeah. So I'm going to jump right into what happened. Okay, because Cotton Candy Doll was out for revenge when I went back. I really was because, um, and I actually, I didn't go back there right away. I waited close to four to five days, almost a week. But I didn't actually wait a whole week. It was sooner than that, but... I waited a while because I didn't like what Toshinori pulled. I didn't like how Keiko acted either toward um, toward me in that situation. Because I feel like he should have been more, defended me more. But then I found out something. So, all right. So anyway, I started off. Um, so I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I went back to my hero and I went to go see Toshinori. I like knocked on his door. Visionary opened the door. I like embraced him and you know, he gave me a kiss and stuff. I came in and Toshinori was like, I have to get ready for work. He's like, didn't you know I have to go to work today? I'm like, yeah, I knew you would have to go to work. I just wanted to say hi. He goes, okay. He goes, is it my day to see you? I said, no, actually it's Kegel's day. So this is getting in my way, guys. I'm so sorry. Get out of the way. Okay. So I can't really see the camera that well without getting in my way. Anyway, um, so Toshi already went to work. And, I, you know, those of you who watched my other video, you already know my plan is. Is to get Toshi Nori back. It's basically splashing with some water. <laughs> so I couldn't do it with him there. Obviously, I couldn't take a bottle. I couldn't take it a, buck of, a bucket of water and just splash it on him because, are you kidding me? Doing that to him? Doing that to all my trying to run? Like, come on. That's not gonna work. So I waited for him to leave and I decided I was gonna set up a bucket so that when he opened the door, the moment he walks in, he would get drenched with water. But I wanted to be able to see it. Right? But then I couldn't set it I couldn't set it up because like every time I tried to prop the door open, it kept shutting and it would splash the water a little bit. And so like I didn't even have the water where I wanted it to go yet. I was just trying to hold it like on the, on the floor. Like, how do I explain it? He didn't have a door stop. He had this block. It was like a wooden block and you could put it in the door to like wedge the door. So then I looked at the living room, like right above between where, so you have the kitchen, the living room, and then you have the room back to where his room is. But that whole floor, that area is carpet. Do you think this, do you think I can't eat carrot? No. Of course not. I don't freaking give a damn. So I grabbed the bucket and I grabbed the chair and I climbed to the top of it and I'm, I rigged the bucket with a rope. And so what I did was I attached the rope. I got these little loops. I hung them around his house and I stretched the, the rope through and then I tied it. So then he has a bucket of water. For, and then the only other problem I had is that I wanted to be able to like see him get dressed with the water. So then... <laughs> After I um after I set up his little compartment, he was gone because I knew he was gone. Okay, so Toshinori, I wasn't afraid of him coming back because I know Toshinori stays at school for at least five, six hours. Like, when he would leave me at his house, it would be five to six hours, but I wouldn't know it because time just flew. Are we still recording? Okay, yes. So I'm going to read you. <laughs> I'm going to read you. Hold on, first, let me show you. All right. This whole page is dedicated to All Might. And my favorite one is this one right here with him holding the heart. See that? So I basically, I sketched this and I put this at the end of the note. <laughs> oh, and this is the book. This is the notebook that I, um, I designed because I didn't like this little thing. This was in the front of it too because I got it from the dollar store. So yeah, I didn't want that in the front of the book. So I basically made my own cover. Yay, congratulations. Yeah, can you tell that I got this from the dollar store? Obviously. Yeah, I, I couldn't deal with that. So, 
I'm going to read you the letter that I wrote to Toshinori, my love. <laughs> Dear Toshinori, I'm returning the favor. How does it feel to be soaking wet? Does it feel good? <laughs> the bucket above represents my love for you. I love you. Bye bye. <laughs> and so like this is the picture that I sketched at the end. Him. Then him basically what hurts. Now it wasn't as perfect as this one is. I tried to do like I used two different colors for like the blush on his cheeks, but I they weren't the right color. And his face looks nothing like that. He actually looks more of a clown. More like a clown. Because I accidentally colored like down some, so, so his nose is kind of red too. But anyway, yeah. So that's him in the picture. <laughs> I left that there for him. So I knew he wouldn't be home for like hours. So I wanted to come back and see later. But first I needed to get Kego. So I went to Kego's house. I knocked on his door. And just to see if he's home. Kego wasn't home. So I knew like, okay, he's not here. There's a good chance that if Kego isn't here. What's that? Probably nothing. Yeah, and neighbors downstairs. Oh, so what was I saying? Oh, yes, I knew Kego. Kego wouldn't be gone that long either. Um, I knew I knew Kego wouldn't be gone that long. Like Toshinori was gonna be gone a long time, but Kego wasn't gonna be gone for that long. So, um, I wanted to trick Kego into um, do like he did me that time with that bracelet. I wanted to do the same deal with him. So you know what I did? I went ahead and. I got him the ring, you know, and I had my friend curse it. Because, yes, there was an. I went to this accursed place called Jewel Pet. No, it was called Jewel Land. I, you guys know I've been trying to go to Jewel Land forever, okay? But it ended up in an accursed place with the accursed animals. Yes, they were nothing like the the stuff I saw. Madara helped me with that, but I'll tell you guys after. So, <laughs> Kego is so freaking funny, so. I waited for him to come home and when he came in, I acted like I was so happy to see him and I was waiting for him all this time and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you're waiting for me and you're wearing all your clothes. And I was like, yeah, of course, because I want to take them off for you when you get here. And he was just like, usually people are waiting. He goes, "Never mind." He's like, what you got there? I'm like, nothing. And I'm hiding it behind my back. So I had this card and I was hiding it behind my back and it, and it said four K go on it. So he was trying to get it from me. At first he was like chasing me around, just playing with me and stuff. And then I was like, I'm just joking. Here you go. So it was a card. It said like, Keg to Kego, thank you for everything. Um, thank you for understanding me. Thank you for being a part of my life and all this. I just wrote, um, I basically gave him a card that said like, oh, what was it? I said it was a thank you card, but then I put like, um, like a like a losing someone card just to be funny so like it had that part at the top and at the bottom it, it talked about like what the heck thinking of you thinking the thinking of you card so then like he was like what's this and he like i was like it's something special he goes what is that i'm like i kind of made it he goes you made this and he picks it up so i made it look like a lord of the ring I made the ring look like Lord of the Rings, except it was silver, and I tried to like embed little um, little pieces of gold into it. It didn't work out that well because it, it was like different colors. Like I don't know how to like I don't know how to wield stuff. Is it called wielding? I don't know how to wield stuff. So um, yeah, so I gave him the ring. So Kego opened his hand. He's looking at the ring like this, like you know how the Ring of Power. Everyone held the ring like this, literally, which is like the dumbest thing. So he's holding the ring like this, and he's like, it's nice. I go, yeah, it's big enough to fit on any finger. And he should have got a clue when I said any finger, because what ring fits on every finger? So he popped the ring on his finger. As soon as he put it on, his next, his legs started buckling. So he's like, what's going on? I was like, your legs are weak. So <laughs> when he felt himself about to fall, he made his wings come out. And then, it, but he dropped to the ground. So he's like, hi, Candida, what are you doing? And I was like, what am I doing? He's like, what are you doing? So I took his hands um, right where his wrist was, and I like kind of wrapped them around with wire. It was like black wire. 
Um, I wish I had like rope or something, but I didn't have that at the time. And I don't know why I used wire. I think I got it from, I got it from somewhere. So I wrapped it around his hands and I was trying to pull him, but I was not, you can't really pull them with like this thin little string. So I actually had his hands and I was pulling him, but he was like grabbing my hands, trying to like grab onto me. And I was like, get off of me. I was like, get the F off of me like that. And he was like, what the heck is your problem? He's like, are you bipolar or something? And I was like, no. I was like, this is my revenge. He says, what the heck are you talking about? I said, oh, I have a letter for you. So I sat him, I sat Kegel down in a chair. And then I was like, actually, I want him to kind of be like bent over. I want him to be bent over. And <laughs> am I bad, guys? Am I wrong for this? I am wrong for this, but like, I felt like I needed to get him back. I did. So his letter said, Dear Kegel, do you know what a slate is? I'm just joking. No, I, I'm just joking. I didn't do that. So, all I could, literally all I could do was laugh, right? So, he's sitting there. He's like glaring at me and stuff, looking all mean. And I, and so like, his his knees were like buckled over, and he was laying like face down. So like, I pulled his hair, like I pulled his hair, and I made him sit up. And I was like, sit up. And he was like this, like oh. And I was like, get down on your knees. And I dropped. And I let go of his hair. And he like fell down. So then like I pushed his legs. To, I went behind him and pushed his legs together. So his butt was in the air. And then he was like, what are you doing? And he's like, where are you going? So I went and got his whip. Yes, he has a whip. He has never used the whip on me. And I would never ever let him use it. He says, so oh, it's for foreplay, whatever. You're not ever using that crap on me. Because first off, I'm not your freaking slave. I'm not your slave. Yeah. So anyway... <laughs> He's bent over like that, and I took a swipe at him. I hit him like three times with it, and he did not make a sound. Okay, he didn't make a sound, and it kind of made me mad because I wanted to hear him be like ah, but he he's not gonna do that. So after I did the third one, I was like, hmm, I dropped it, and I looked at him, and he was just like so pissed off. I'm just like. All right, so my work here is done. So I'm going to leave him alone. So then I went back to Toshinori's house and I climbed in his window so I could watch, like, from under the bed. <laughs> so Toshinori was walking in. I heard him. I don't know how long it was taking him to do stuff in the kitchen. I couldn't, for some reason, I just couldn't wait. But then also, it, it didn't really, it worked out, but it didn't because I felt like I was just too, too close to the water. Because the way the bucket was, it was like, okay, so the room is, okay, so how do I explain the room? Okay, so imagine you walk straight, like you're leaving out of the, okay, living room, kitchen, hallway, and the hallway leads right to the bedroom. So you have the hallway, bedroom, bathroom on this side, closet, okay? So his bed was facing, when you walk in, the first thing you see is the bed. And the bed is facing toward you, so you're sitting up edge of the bed. But the bucket and stuff is right there. So not only was your carpet and stuff going to get wet, but your bed and everything was going to get soaked and drenched with this water. So I was on the other side of the bed, basically hiding, like praying. He doesn't hear me breathe or whatever. So he in the kitchen, taking forever, doing what he's doing. I was actually kind of like this, because I'm just like, like, when is he going to come in here? <laughs> when is he going to walk through these doors? Finally, I heard him coming toward the door and he had a smile on his face. He was like, today was a good day. <laughs> he was like, today's, he was like, today's a good day. And I was, he was pushing the door. <laughs> was like, Shh. <laughs> and I was like, Chris, I can't remember. And Toshi Dory was just like, what? So then he saw the note that I left, like, hanging off the desk. He, when he, like, snatched it up, and he read it, and he was just, like, he went over to the trash, and he started ripping it up. And then he went into the bathroom and slammed the door. It was like, bang. So I was like, okay, my turn to get out. So he was in the bathroom. I made my way out. I wasn't going to climb out the window, because, like, you guys got to understand the intensity and the freaking fear rushing through you after you do some crap like that, okay? So I was like running and I was on my way out the door and I kept looking behind me because I was so scared he was going to like catch up with me and snatch my 
Like he was gonna snatch my ass. So I was just like, I hurried up. I managed to get out of the house. I was like, yes, I got away. And Kago, I guess he probably, I don't know what happened. I think he maybe he was still tied up or whatever. I wasn't about to go to his house and find out though. So I called my guy. My guy came and got me. Took me back here. So I left there feeling pretty proud, proud of myself, right? And this was, this was the day before yesterday. So I haven't been back there since then. So I already know when I get back there, they're probably going to be, yeah, they're going to mess me up. Um, hopefully Toshinori just says, just laughs it off. Like he seemed, he was pissed off. Hegel was pissed off because he said, you know, I guess he thought I treated him like a slave probably. Um, so yeah, he was mad about that. Oh, and another thing, um, what did I forget to tell you guys? Kago came clean to me, um, about Monora. He said, he told me, he's like, obviously this guy is crazy. So, and I've seen him do some crazy, insane stuff. I've never seen a power like his before. He said, we have to play it safe. So I figured, why not get, let him get well, at least one night with you, whatever. And I said, that's not the way it works. Because if you give him an inch, he's going to try and take a whole mile, okay? This man is not playing with us. And he goes, also, he saved Frodo, so I feel like I owe him. I said, you don't know, owe him a thing. Well, the, you know, Frodo's fate is because of you. So if that if my child had him gotten, if he had left this world, I would have blamed Kago for it a bunch of percent. Because they, they didn't have to go rescue him right then and there. He could have suffered a little bit longer. I don't care if he was an infant or not. He could have suffered a lot longer, gotten rescued the right way, and then he would have less trauma than he does now. And we wouldn't be having all the issues we're having with him, which I'll talk about that in another video. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. It's just too much stuff. So after I came back here, yeah, so that was his thing. He's obviously crazy. Okay, and obviously he can do some stuff, whatever. That was his reasoning for saying that. He said, I would never actually be okay with you dealing with him, ever. I said, you should have seemed fine before when, he was, when I was on his bed with him and all this stuff. Kegel okay, apparently never saw anything happen. So I just cut it off from there. I didn't tell him this dude, like, totally, like, licked me or whatever. I wasn't going to tell him. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, you know what? And I'm, I, so I knew I needed to get Madara, but I was afraid because I'm like, Madara might kill me if I try anything with him. Like, I, I would never douse him with water. I couldn't do it because I feel like, yeah, bitch, uh, no, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you're gonna freaking die because he's gonna kill you. So. My whole thing with Madara was I needed to put him on lock before I even went there. So I made a plan with my guide. My guide told me that this was a good plan. This plan might work. Then he told me it was going to work without a doubt. And he said he doesn't think I should do it. Then he was like, he's not sure. And then I said, I'm going to do it anyway. So I had already planned everything before Madara got there. So I put together a prison. Okay, with like walls and everything. So he, couldn't, so he wouldn't be able to get out of. I figured this is my last, this is my last shot. So basically I'm locking him up. I'm throwing away the key because honey... We can't be friends, but we also can't be lovers either. I'm not going to do it. So, I told Madara I needed help shifting to Jewel Land. He told me to describe this place. For, he said, describe this place for me. I said, it's happy. It's got happy animals in it with jewels in their eyes. Or basically, like, they have jewels in their eyes. Magic jewels. So, he's like, okay. And I said, they're also really cute. So Madara shifted me to this place. It was nothing but darkness there. Um, the sky is kind of like this place, but it was completely dark. And um, there wasn't any animals. There was like one accursed animal and it had teeth and it was like prowling at me the whole time. I was afraid it was going to attack me. It didn't attack me. And Madara was just standing there and the only thing I could see was like his shadow. So it was like he was there, but he wasn't. So I called my guy, and my guy shifted me from there, and the place is still pretty fresh and vivid in my memory, so I don't like it. So I'm doing everything I can to erase it. So then, um, I, I told Madara, um, I was like, come here. I did like this. I said, come here. He came closer. I did. I put my hand out, like, grab my hand. So he grabbed my hand. As soon as he grabbed my hand, 
I pulled, I pulled him and I touched my guide. So my guide basically transferred us into this prison and then took me out. So Madara was in there. He's looking around. He was like, what is this? What is this? And I pointed to the note I gave him. And the note said this. Yes, everybody gets notes from me. Because Cotton Candy Doll likes writing notes to these people, okay? It's, it's the best. Dear Madara, we can't be together because I don't trust you. You might murder me. Have fun living in a prison. A square room with no way out. This was your choice. You have threatened my family and my life for the last time. Good riddings, you creature. So, I came up, threw out the key. And I'm like, you know what? There's rats in there. There's rats in there. He can eat those if he gets hungry. He can drink their blood as a drink. But then, you know, my conscience got the best of me. I ended up going back and adding like a sink. I did it from the outside. I, I ended up going back adding a sink. I don't even remember what else I did in there. I think this is the sink. I don't think I left any food. I guess he'll be eating rats then. I don't know. But regardless, um, yeah. I basically left him to die. So if he gets out, he's going to kill me. So let's not worry about that. Let's talk about our fun event we had with the kids. So there's that too. So this is, this is, this is nothing to do with Toshinori or Kego, okay? Because I shifted to the school and I knew they wouldn't be there. And Principal Nezu called me in the office. He said, Miss Cotton Candy, nah, I need you to take class A for Mr. Aizawa. I need you to take over the class. I said, okay, I can, he can give me his notes. I can go over, I can teach his lecture or his lesson or his plan. He goes, no, no, no. I need you to take the kids to your class. Just teach your class. I go, okay, my class isn't really. He goes, your class is basically a recess. It's not even really that important. And I'm just like, not important. Like, what do you mean? You hired me for this and you begged me to come back. And now you're telling me my class isn't important, whatever. But I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. So I'm like, okay. So I'm walking down the hallway. Kirishima comes next to me. He's like, hey, Miss Cotton Candy Doll. I'm like, hi. I'm like, where are you going? He goes, going to class. I said, could you go tell all the other people in your class they need to come out and line up in the hallway? He goes, sure. So for the life of me, they can't make a line. I don't know why. So I basically have to try and get everybody in the line. Finally, they all I get everybody in the hallway. I'm like, okay, so we're going to my class. And Midoriya is like, Miss Cotton Candy Doll, don't we have um, Mr. Aizawa right now? And I said, no, you're going to have my class because he's in here. And they're like, oh, he's not here. And they started talking or whatever. And I'm like, come on, we're going to my class. So they're following me down the hallway. Um, and the class is really loud. They're not really even in the line. I'm just trying to get them all in my classroom. So that way they're like not being disruptive. But for some reason, I never really see any other kids in the class except the ones from class A. So we get in my little obstacle room thingy. I call over Manetta. I ask how he's doing. He said he's doing good. Um, but I noticed that in my class, now his, his, uh, his endurance is like really slowed down from what it used to be. He's a lot slower than what he was. So it's like, eh. I actually really liked when he was picking up the pace because that was something I was like, yes, I have something I can root for for you. But I can't really do that if you're slowing down. Momo has a problem with her ability. Like, she has a problem with her endurance too because she doesn't really want to use her physical ability. She wants to use her, like, her power, her power, her quirk. And I told her this is about physical endurance. It has nothing to do with your quirk. You shouldn't really be using your quirk like that. You can use your quirk to... No, you can, you can use it to go over obstacles That's a, if it's a little bit high. So we have these, I don't know what the heck they're called. It looks like a desk, but it has like a, on the top of it, it has like a cushion, okay? So then they can like run and jump over those. They're supposed to be using their arms and their legs, and they're not supposed to be using like the power. Now, with the exception of Ida, I allowed him to because for the simple fact that they're attached to his legs, so whenever he trains his legs, I allow him to train train his quirk as a part of his legs. Um, but I didn't do that with Bakugo because Bakugo would blow up my whole class. So I don't want my equipment ruined and then I have to order new stuff. So I didn't want to bother with that. So then, um, so they're working out. They're doing their, um, they're doing their thing in that class. They're doing their, um, I had, uh, 
I made them do three laps. They did uh, they did two times around the obstacle course, and everybody was out of breath. And then they, they did the last run, which was like a mile around. Midoriya beat everybody. He <laughs> even beat Ida because they were just running. They weren't using their ability. I told them they can't. Don't use your quirk. So they were doing that. Koda is really cute. Um, he's also just really, really shy. He would not really speak to me. I was like, are you okay? And he kept like, I was like, okay. I was like, are you going to be okay? He was like, I was like, okay. But I think he's cheating because um, it looked like he was gliding, but I couldn't see anything under him. So I wonder if he's using some kind of invisible bugs or something to help him like move faster. I don't know. Because his legs are moving, but it was moving weird. Uh, who else? Uh, oh, Kaminari was complaining the whole time. I don't understand, Miss Cotton Canada, why we can't use our quirks. Isn't this class for training? I said, yes, it is. This, this class is for training your physical and mental endurance. I said, on oh, some classes, we'll train with our quirks and stuff. But this is not one of those classes. This is just a regular, basically like a gym ed class. Except I had stuff for them to do. So there's that. And then... Who else gave me trouble? Momo. Because Momo wanted to keep creating... Um, she wanted to keep creating, like, little shortcuts. Like, if the item was something tall, she would make it smaller and just, like, just jump over it. And I'm just like, you can't... You can't freaking do that. You can't make this into something smaller than what it is. Or it's like, oh, the line is coming up. Instead of crossing it, I'm going to make something. And then when I climb on that, I'll be, like, over the line. I didn't understand like her logic either but one thing I, I did know for certain all of the kids they really are used to using all their quirks they're not used to using their physical ability in their eyes physical ability I think physical ability ability is really weak in their eyes so it's one of those things where I have to try and like build up on that I'm, I'm gonna try to because I really believe in them I'm gonna encourage so when I go back to my hero again and I actually go to Toshinori's house. I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking I might go while he's asleep. Because if he's asleep, he's going to be, like, really sleepy. He's not going to be able to, like, really think in, about what he's going to do to me. Keigo, I'm just not going to him ever. Like, yeah. He is going to hurt me. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to do, I didn't know what else to do with him. How else was I going to punish this man? How else? There's nothing else I could do. Toshinori deserved that dang water. But the way he's, his happiness just went all the way down once he got splashed and then he saw that picture of him holding the heart. <laughs> he had to know it was me trying to draw him. I tried, guys. It did not turn out well. I tried. Yeah, we still got... Oh, it's 28. It's been 28 minutes. I guess this video... I think I told you guys everything. I told you about Madara. Freaking accursed jewel and... I don't know. I mean, I really want to try it. I don't want to give up on that place. I feel like I can go. Maybe if I didn't have someone try to just pull me there, I'll probably do better. Maybe. I'm just not really sure. So, tell me what you think I should do about that. But do you think those are good punishments? Like, <laughs> Kego. Yeah, Kego got whipped. But he only, I only hit him three times. I didn't even do, like, I didn't give him a hardcore anything. I'm afraid of what Toshinori might do. Toshinori might, might, uh, he might hunt me again. Like, remember that game where he put on that hat and he was, like, shooting me? <laughs> I don't want to do that again with him. I don't want Keiko to team up with him and they both shoot me. That would be terrible. And Madara, I mean, I hope he doesn't get out. I think I'm going to go there tonight and visit him and maybe send, give him, like, bread. I can't let this guy completely starve in there. He doesn't have a way to get out, so he can't get out. You know, that that place is confined. So it's a confinement just for him, so it's perfect. I hope it holds him. If it doesn't, I'm in trouble, guys. I don't know what I'm going to do. And the thing is, Madara has been leaving little, little, um, trinkets from his visits and stuff he has stuff that like i've been getting weird stuff in my room and i know it's from him i can't think what i should do like to prevent that from happening 
I don't know what I should do. You guys tell me. Okay, tell me in the comments what you think about that. I guess I'll end the video here. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a like. And if you hated it, <laughs> you know what to do. Also, I hope this video, did I warn you guys about how cringy this video was going to be? Okay, I'll tell you guys the truth, okay. Kegel is angry because he was not wearing pants <laughs> or underwear when I, when, I, when I gave him those whips. I, he wasn't because I took them down, okay. I wasn't going to say that at first because I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to be that explicit in the telling you guys what happened. But yeah, that's kind of what happened. So, Toshinori, yeah, he got splashed in water. He was completely and fully clothed. And I think he had papers in his hand. I hope they didn't get ruined. If they did it well. Yeah, he's going to be mad at me too. And Myra, let's just hope he stays caged. I'm going to go back and make sure he's still in there. I have to. If not, I'm going to start planning my funeral. Because um, he probably will kill me. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think that was a clever idea with a note? Toshinori, how does it feel to be all wet? <laughs> how does it feel to be wet? Okay, I'm going to stop. All right, um, I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye.